What's up guys, let's get right into it. The object of this review is to provide useful information. Now, what do I mean by that? Most reviews of the 1299 consist of either some guy on a test ride regurgitating Googleable statistics, or a former pro goosing it around a track and comparing it to other bikes that had a one-tenth faster or slower lap time. Not to say that either of those reviews don't have their place, but they seem to lack substance that would help potential buyers. In the end, most people are going to buy this bike to ride on the street for more than 15 minutes. My first piece of advice is to disregard all of my opinions. The question you need to ask yourself is what bike do I really want? Deep down, you already know. It took me a while to decide on the Panigale, but in the end, it wasn't about what's the best bike, it was about what bike do I want. I've owned this thing for two full riding seasons and can confidently say that I've put it through enough to develop a long-term logical opinion that's worth sharing. I'm going to take a different approach to this review, using the structure of a traditional whiskey tasting, the four main sections of which are visual analysis, nose, palate, and finish. In whiskey tasting, visual analysis is pretty self-explanatory. The color can indicate wood type, char level of the cask, and hint at the duration the whiskey is spent in said cask. Swirling the glass will leave legs, which will give clues to the strength and maturity of the spirit. For the purpose of a motorcycle review, visually, it's hard to say that this bike isn't one of the most beautiful pieces of machinery ever designed. From the beak to the seat cowl, I struggle to find anything displeasing. Digging a little deeper, you can tell that the attention to small details also gives clues to how much thought and effort has been put into this bike's composition. In this case, you can translate that to strength and maturity of the bike. I consider this the home for any published technical info, and like I said before, I'm not going to waste your time with any of that. The only negative thing from this section is that abomination that holds the license plate. Back to whiskey tasting. The nose portion involves analyzing the drink's aroma. You're not getting a full taste yet, but smelling gets you damn close. One of my tricks is to use your hand to scoop that one drip that always runs down the bottle after pouring a glass. Wipe that drip and rub both hands together to warm it up, and then cover your nose and mouth like you're about to sneeze. You can usually get a slightly different profile than dipping your nose into the glass. As it pertains to motorcycles, this correlates to the first ride sensations. These are the things that you probably have a good idea of what to expect from the visual analysis step. Foot peg height, aggressive seating position, fantastic acceleration, Brembo braking. The first sensation I experienced when I collected my 1299 was, what have I done? Oh no. When you turn the key, you're greeted with a robotic whip from the fuel pump and the light show from the TFT display. The suspense of holding the starter button through that classic Italian start, which is equal to one eternity, eventually fires the 90 degree V-twin into a clatter and shake that reminds you how serious this bike really is. It's both impressive and intimidating, and videos don't do it justice. The bike is super light and flickable. It'll dive in and hug corners and stand up on the way out. The quick shifter is fantastic. There's more power than anyone would ever need on the road, and the TFT dash display is phenomenal, but a little complicated. I actually made an entire video of its features. I'll link it here and put it in the top line of the description. The negatives. Price tag's a bit of a shock, but that seems to be similar across the bikes in this category. Neutral was elusive at first, but I nipped that with a simple clutch lever adjustment. The Panigale is noticeably happy under 4,000 RPM, and there's a tiny bit of play in the throttle that can be eliminated by inserting little plastic spacers. I was originally annoyed with the way the bars shook, but honestly I forgot about it after about a month. The seat is really the only mistake that's been apparent since early on. I bought an Airhawk dual sport seat pad before going on a long tour, and it was so great that I just left it on. And don't worry, we'll talk about heat in the next section, which is called palate. The palate step is where whiskey is tasted. It's moved around the tongue and swallowed. Besides the literal taste, flavors and aromas are picked up by the nasal cavity. For the Ducati, this segment represents everything that's made apparent by long-term use. In order to gain some kind of credibility, in the last two riding seasons I've logged five times more miles on my bike than I have in two full years on my car, I'm no stranger to sitting in traffic during hot weather, I've toured the longest being 700 miles in 11 hours, and I can confirm that the seat is hard, the comfort seat is hard, and the Panigale makes for a shit touring bike. I've also been hailed on, which happened about hour 10 of the return ride I mentioned before. This is the type of bike that you'll accidentally catch yourself doing 160 miles per hour, which also happened. At that speed, the bike is comfortable, confident, and seemingly effortless. The bike is everything you expect it to be and more. I don't know if I'm just lucky, but I've also had zero mechanical issues. Coincidentally, whiskey and this 1,285cc Ducati share a heat characteristic. Anything with an engine that size is going to produce a decent amount of heat. On the Panigale, the subframe's bolted to the rear cylinder head, so the subframe heats up, and that happens to be where most people squeeze the bike with their thighs. I'm not sure if it's my height or my riding position, but I've personally never took offense to the heat that the bike gives off, and I've not had the, ah, it scalded me moment that some people have claimed. Nothing on this bike is cheap. Insurance, maintenance, 
parts, a full Acura system goes for north of $4,000. The only other real gripe is that the stock mirrors are a joke. You can't see shit out of them and they don't fold. Well, they do fold, but only once. Oh, f Oh, no. Finally, the finish. How does the whiskey behave as it lingers on the palate and the flavor decays in your mouth? Now that the honeymoon period's over, how do I feel about the 1299 and was it worth the money? There are a lot of other types of bikes that I'd like in addition, but no other sport bike I'd rather have. I still love it. Sure, there are a few quirks that I can live with, like heat, vibration, a hard seat, cost, and fear of all those reliability horror stories. I'd love the bike to have factory heated grips, cruise control, and launch control like the S1000RR, but I'd try all that in an instant for the excitement and the character of this particular bike. Now, the moral of this story is to get whatever bike you want. No matter what bike you decide on, there's going to be little things that you're going to have to deal with that everyone else blows out of proportion. I'm sure some people have questions about things that I didn't cover, so feel free to ask me anything about the bike. I have no problem going into more detail. I think that's it for now, so as always, thanks for watching. If this happens to be the first video of mine that you've seen, take a gander at the other videos on the channel and consider subscribing. The bulk of my content focuses on the 1299. Until next time, buy whatever bike you want. I squeeze in between my car and the side of the garage. It's a two-car garage, so I park my Mazda kind of cocked, and I can slip, I can slip everything in right next to it slat it in